Secretary, I mentioned in my open st opening statement that Title VI of the, of the Civil Rights Act uh, of 1964 prohibits discrimination on race, color, or national origin in programs and activities that receive federal financial assistance. No student should feel unsafe right. on their campus. Yet just last week, Columbia University had to move classes online, and Jewish students were told by a campus rabbi to go home because it was no longer safe for them on their campus. And late last night, protesters took over Hamilton Hall on campus, and the university is locked down today with access limited to only residential students, if they're, whoever's left there, I would imagine some parents have said, you must leave, and essential personnel. This is just totally unacceptable. So Secretary Cardona, do you believe what is happening to Jewish students at Columbia and in other colleges and universities across this country is okay? Absolutely not. I think what's happening on our campuses is abhorrent. Uh, hate has no place on our, on our campuses, and uh, I'm very concerned with the reports of anti-Semitism. I've spoken to Jewish students who have feared going to class as a result of some of the harassment that they're uh, facing on campuses. It's unacceptable, and we're committed as, as a Department of Education to adhering to Title VI enforcement. We have uh, 137 open cases. We take this very seriously. We've increased the number of communications uh, to college campuses to make sure that they have what they need uh, in terms of the law and uh, best practices on how to make sure they're protecting students. Look, as an educator, lifelong educator, protecting students is our number one responsibility. We take that seriously, and uh, you know the anti-Semitism that we've seen on campus is unacceptable. Unacceptable, we agree. So you have 136 cases, you said. How long does a case take? I mean, by the time this goes through the system, quite frankly, it's either gonna be all over or one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's sort of an, in, I mean, that's good. Yeah. And I'm glad you're doing that. But you have more immediate uh, means at your, at your disposal. For instance, removing federal funds from uh, institutions that get federal funds, which I imagine most all of them, well, they all do, right. uh, in, if they're in violation of, ti of, the, of Title VI. <clears throat> you're absolutely Are you right. intending to do that? You're absolutely right. Uh, investigating the cases is the enforcement part of it, but we do have on our website, ed.gov, there's a button there supporting campus safety with uh, guidance and regulations around how to do that. And this is why in our budget we're proposing a $22 million increase to increase the number of investigators so we can move on those investigations that are open. And ultimately, if a school refuses to comply to ti with Title VI, yes, we would remove federal dollars. Well, I mean, a school can refuse, I mean, can go ahead and say they're going to abide by Title VI, but they're not doing anything. I, I would commend to you our, our former member of uh, the Senate, who's now the president at the University of Florida. He is not taking a light touch here. I mean, he is uh, saying for, for many days we have patiently told protesters, many of whom are agitators or outsiders, that they were able to exercise their right to free speech and free assembly. We also told them that Clearly prohibited activities will result in trespassing order from the university police. This is not complicated. The University of Florida is not a daycare, and we do not treat protesters like children. They know the rules, they break the rules, and they'll face the consequences. I mean, I would recommend this. Put this on the front of your uh, page on best way to deal with uh, anti-Semitism on campus. We do have a statement that I've updated after uh, the campus protests that make it very clear that... Uh, being unsafe on campus is not going to be tolerated, and that we, we do not condone and we definitely reject any uh, calls for genocide or any calls for anti-Semitism or any anti-Semitism on campus. And that's something that I've been pretty adamant about even before October 7th. Do you have people at, the, at Columbia right now on the scene to see what's going on there? Do you have staff there to watch? I do not have staff at Does Columbia. the Civil Rights Office have somebody up there? I do not have staff at uh, the... Columbia University. And I should share with you that we do have an open investigation at Columbia University. Right. Okay. Uh, I want to move to the FAFSA because I brought that up in my opening statement. The, d the data that I, I used, I put up here on a chart just for, so everybody could see. 36% down among freshmen nationally. In West Virginia, down 40%. And I can tell you Sarah Tucker, who, ha who ha heads up our higher education is, has been a wonderful resource for me on data, but also trying to help us find a way to, to get this going. 
This is disturbing as well. I talked to somebody who works at a, a career in technical. She has more uh, adult students. They're totally confused. So students that are uh, among West Virginia students age 25 and up, down 25%. Now, you said we're going to get 600,000 more students because of the simplification. You've lost all of these students this year. Think about that in terms of what that does going forward for the next four. The chances are for the next four years, those, those students may not, some of them, maybe the majority of them, but you're, going to you're already going to lose students in that year, and maybe life gets in the way and they decide, I, I can't move forward on this. I'm not even going to fill this out. It took too long. I don't understand it. I don't know what's going on. Um, we, we've got to be more aggressive here, and I, I honestly get tired. I'm on the Appropriations Committee, and it's all about money, but it seems like the only solution we ever, we ever hear is, well, I need more money for staff. Well, this could have been done a lot better. We should have heard from what you said today. We should have been hearing that a year ago so that we could have been prepared for where we are, and I'm sure you feel the same way, that you would have liked to have had that conversation a year ago. Is there any way, I mean, is there, you know, Senator Collins asked for an apology. Have you apologized? Have you said, we know we've really screwed this up and uh, we, need to, we need to make it better for not just the students but the institutions as well? Yes, absolutely. I'll give you a chance to do that. Absolutely. I've spoken to parents and students directly. I've sat with them while they're filling out FAFSA. We at the uh, FSA have worked uh, to return 28 million borrowers to repayment. We've changed servicers and this FAFSA, uh, better FAFSA. You've also worked on forgiving a whole lot of student debt that's diverted a lot of your resources into this while you're not focusing on the fundamentals of people I, trying to go to college for the first time. I would welcome an opportunity to engage with folks in West Virginia to share the strategies that we're doing, and I'd love to work together with you to make sure that the West Virginians have access uh, to higher education. The form is now about 15 minutes. We are processing, if a student in West Virginia applies today, um, by Friday, the colleges are gonna have the information. We've processed over 8.2 million Are you accurately processing now? Yes, we are accurately processing. That was processing. an issue too. We made those uh, corrections and we are accurately processing Thank information. You. And to be very frank with you, I've been hearing students are getting their letters. Look, we're on the same team here. We wanna get as many students connected. Right. And I look forward to working with you to make sure we Thank can you. do that in your state. Thank you.